because they the need to genetically modify our beings? Well, basically, um, the production of beans starts from the farm. And in the farm, there are different things that grow there. The farmers know those things that disturb their farming. They know that there are pests that bore into the, uh, the, the uh, bean. The weevil. Mm. The weevil. Mm. That weevil is what you talked about, Maruca vitrata. Okay. Now, essentially what the genetically modified uh, bean is about is that the skin that covers that bean has Not resistance to okay. To the weevil. The weevil. Okay. So we're going to see more beans in the market now without kokoro. Correct. A lot of, I mean, many of us grew up in boarding house right. eating beans with right. weevils. I, I did. In the Bobby <laughs> College, we had beans, so, and we believe that it made us to grow taller. taller. That's right. <laughs> so we're likely to see more beans in the market now that has no weevil holes at all and no weevils in them. Precisely, is that what this is all about? Precisely so. But that's what this is all about. But there, there are more serious issues related to Exactly. It. I was going to ask you, there are concerns. There are, I mean, there are research, research um, findings that, have, that talked about the possibility of the introduction of natural plant toxins. There are many more concerns. Okay. But so these, uh, do we have what it takes to cater to those concerns? That's the reason why I'm saying all these boil down to what? of the unknown. You see, people are looking at new beans, so to speak, coming into the market. And that when we eat these new beans, what is going to happen over the period of time? But just like Rufus said, the onus has been on those who have gone into this research to do what? To conduct trials over a period of time to examine their product over a period of time, test for different things before they actually introduce the bean into the market. Okay, let, let me just bring this to Dr. Begba. Dr. Begba, we do know that in some countries, especially in Europe, they are banning ge ge genetically modified organisms, and, but we are sort of like bringing it into our country, and they have had a longer period of testing and using this GMO products. So why are we bringing it into the country if they are banning it there? Or maybe, let me use the word, See, reducing this question the has always been reoccurring. Yes. And one thing I try to avoid is to be seen, to be making statements to promote or support the technology. I'm not here to support the technology, but as a regulator of the sector, I have enough knowledge and evidence to be able to say this is safe for Nigeria and this is not safe for Nigeria. We must always understand that countries differ. We know that European countries are advanced, but if you go back to the European EFSA Food Safety Authority, you will find the number of foods, you know, GMOs that have been approved in EU countries. And apart from that, we are aware too that in most of the European countries, some of them are not, they don't want to grow it, but some of them, they are consuming it, they are using it for feed, they are using it for confessionaries, and so on and so forth. If, and uh, the reason why Europe, most European countries don't want to grow GMO, uh, yeah, I don't think they are looking at it from point of safety. But uh, why I don't want to really dwell so much on that is that now every country or continent has its own peculiarity and peculiar problem. Really, the issue of genetic modification, it is not that you must do GM genetic modification. It is to solve specific problems that you can also solve using conventional means. And that is how it is. And all GMOs are not for the same purpose. They are not they the same. But in the country like Nigeria, we have about 15 agri research institutes and colleges of education as well as uh, conventional universities, universities of agriculture, that are doing genetic engineering. The assumption that they are coming from outside the country should not always be there. There are a lot of agricultural problems. There are problems affecting the agricultural sector. And if scientists can come up with solutions to this 
And we have a regulatory body to ensure that these things are scrutinized and looked at in-depthly before they are brought to the market or released to the environment. And we have the knowledge to do that. I see no reason why anybody should be worried about the, the situation in Nigeria. Nigeria is not Europe. Nigeria is an advanced country. Let nobody put down Nigeria. Nigeria is a great country. And I can tell you, this present government have identified science and technology as major tools to transform the economy. And this is in tandem with Dr. the Beba, Union. Dr. Begba, one, one second, if I may come in here. Do you also, are you also aware that Burkina Faso, an African country, for instance, is cutting down on, the, on, on GM products? Let me, look, I, wouldn't, I don't intend to demean any country. Nigeria and Burkina Faso, there's no comparison. And let me also make it clear, if you have been following up on that trend, even those from Burkina Faso will tell you that the farmers are agitating for this BT cutting that the initially said they didn't want because of the fiber length shortage. And uh, look, uh, I think you should ask me other questions as far as I did. But I want to tell you, Nigeria has enough knowledge to know what is good for this country and what is not good. And okay, let, let, if let, there let, is a failure in a particular technology, does not mean that technology cannot be adopted. Okay. It cannot be Dr. adjusted. Uh, Dr. Begba, you know... It's science technology. Dr. Begba, yes, Nigeria is more advanced than some of these other countries. And there's a world, I mean, world standard level of knowledge in the country. Agree. But Nigerians are worried because of these other examples they are seeing. Let me read out something to you. Toby Lawal says this. He says, GMO crops may cause antibiotic resistance. He says, Iowa State University research shows that when crops are modified to include antibiotics and other items that kill germs and pests, it reduces the effectiveness of an antibiotic or other medication when it's needed in the traditional sense. That's from Toby Lawal. There are many other Nigerians who are yes, worried let about me, it. Yes. Let me tell you, when genetically modified organisms are made, are developed, the issue of uh, bacteria, talking about um, uh, looking at antibiotics, that antibiotics is used to test whether that genetically modified organism is effective. The modification is effective. And after that, there is a means of screening out that by antibiotics that was used. These are some of the things we look at at the biosafety office. So the issue of somebody just coming up and say this said, this said, but let's, well, I don't want to doubt such things, but I'm telling you, before any genetically modified organism is released in Nigeria, we screen for such things. We look at the, the history of such things. And we also look at the gene, substantially, is it different from the convention? Does it have any new toxin? Can it cause allergy? Can it become invasive in the environment? Can it become so dominant that you cannot displace this conventional one? And apart from that, we also look at the issue of socioeconomic interest. That is one okay. to know whether this thing would it be useful to the farmers. All right. Will okay. farmers make more money? Okay, Dr. Weber, let's bring in uh, Dr. Adeleji. See this. Same from Toby Lawal, who's like, writing in from London. He says, some genetically modified food may present carcinogenic exposure risk. A paper that has been twice published but retracted once as well showed that crops tolerant to commercial pesticides greatly increase the risk of cancer development in rats. The information from this research study, though limited, has been widely circulated and creates the impression that all GMO foods are potentially hazardous. To a large extent, the fear of the general public is legitimate fear. Because there are records that show that certain things that have been introduced into, into the market that falls under the group of genetically modified foods have given concern in certain clients. However, the reason why the agency that Rufus Ebegba is heading was created is to be able to regulate the issue of biotechnology in this country. It goes beyond the issue of consumption of food. Biological warfare goes on as we speak. We need to take a quick break. We'll come back and continue this conversation. We do have somebody else joining us via telephone to also weigh in on this matter after the break. Don't go away. <laughs> 